Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, today's video has been voted for by my Patreon members. They have asked me to do a film about a famous British Army officer, Mad Jack Churchill. No relation or no direct relation to Sir Winston Churchill, may I add. And this is a film about his daring do in World War II. So a little bit more of a, an introduction here into Mad Jack Churchill. You see, when I was a young lad, I was born in 1955, so many of my relatives who'd survived the Second World War were still around. And very often at family get-togethers, they would talk about their experiences during the war. And one of my uncles told me, you know, this young lad on his knee kind of thing, about the legend of the British Army officer who carried his sword into battle and who had shot a German with his longbow. So even when I was a little kid, I knew about the legend of uh, Mad Jack Churchill, Jack Churchill, Fighting Jack Churchill, as he was called. But let me tell you who he actually was. John Malcolm Thorpe Fleming Churchill. DSO and Bar, MC and Bar. Now that's Distinguished Service Order and Bar. Military Cross and Bar. These are just under the Victoria Cross and he's won them both twice. Wow, what a brave individual. Born in 1906 in Ceylon. He's now that's Sri Lanka nowadays. Father was, was out there. He was a part of the Foreign Office. Office and engineer, I believe. He had two brothers, Thomas and Robert. Robert, known as Buster, was actually killed in action in the Royal Navy, uh, Malta, 1942. His family had Scottish roots and um, Jack Churchill really took this to heart. He learned to play the bagpipes and he was so good. Uh, 1938, I think it was, it was the Aldershot tattoo where he came second in the piping uh, competition in the contest there. And then in 1939, he represented Britain in the World uh, Archery Championships. So he wasn't just uh, somebody who dabbled. This is a guy who was a consummate uh, piper and uh, a bowman too. But the legend that really bit me as a kid was this was the army officer who shot a German with his longbow. So Jack Churchill was commissioned into the British Army, the Manchester Regiment, 1926, over in Rangoon in India. And he did a bit of an adventure there. He rode across India and Burma on his motorbike. And at one stage, he's going across a bridge, I believe this was in Burma, where it's not a proper bridge. It's just railway sleepers with the railway lines laid across. So he balances his motorcycle on the actual rail and then himself skips across on the sleepers. What a guy. Brave, determined, bit of an explorer, bit of an adventurer. But he comes out the army. Uh, he's gonna become an entertainer or uh, well, and an actor. And I understand he, he um, starred in the film Ivanhoe as a bowman. So there's lots you can read about this incredible chap, Jack Churchill. But his story takes us to 1940, uh, when the British Army is withdrawing from France, heading towards the beaches of Dunkirk. He's been recalled. He's actually fighting his way back as a rear guard with the British Army pulling back towards the famous Dunkirk beaches. Now, he's just outside of a place, Lepinay, I believe is the, the way you uh, pronounce it. It's in the Pas de Calais. And what he's doing is he's counterattacking the Germans and ambushing them so that they are reluctant to advance too fast. And the story goes, he's, he sees a patrol, a German patrol, and they're going to ambush it. So he's got his, his men set up with their brain guns and rifles. But he takes out his longbow. And as the first German comes round the corner, he shoots him dead straight through the chest with a longbow arrow. And then combat ensues. The German patrol is killed. The British now withdraw. And Mad Jack was actually seen on his motorbike going across a field with his longbow and with his arrows in a pannier. And he was he saw his friend and his, his friend waves over and Jack came over and asked if he got anything to drink. And uh, his friend noticed that he'd been hit, he'd been wounded. Either the ear had been clipped or he'd been a narrow miss here. 
and he dismissed it. Oh, it's nothing. We're fine. Now, later on, he played down the incident of the shooting the German. He said, oh, his kit had been run over or something like that. But it would seem that you've got an eyewitness shows him with his archery equipment after the incident. So I'm not gonna ruin it because for me, ever since I was a child, Jack Churchill shot a German with his longbow. But the war carries on. And uh, after the fall of Dunkirk and the British Army reorganizes, 1941, Jack joins the commandos and he's second in command on the raid of the town called Vagsoy in Norway. This town had become a German garrison and in it were factories that processed fish oil that was needed for the German war effort. So in they go, the Royal Navy, their ships open fire, then the landing craft go in and Jack Churchill leads his men with the sword in his hand. This is an incredible thing because they engage the enemy, they put them down, they capture quite a number of Germans. Also, local Norwegian men volunteer to come back with them and serve in the Free Norwegian Army. But Jack and his men, they really do the incredible job because they allow the Navy, as they silence the guns on the coast, to come in and sink uh, I think 100, was it 16,000 tons of shipping that belonged to the Germans. The whole raid was a major success, but you can watch it because it was filmed. Now this is state of the art, this is 1941, and they took a camera crew with them to film it. Yeah, we'll put a link so that you can have a look at the film yourself, because in part of the film on one of the landing craft, there is Jack Churchill playing his bagpipes, March of the Cameron Men. Brilliant. So later in the war, 1943, Jack Churchill, leading his troops with his bagpipes and sword, lands on the island of Sicily, and then Salerno, the mainland of Italy, and he is fighting. In fact, just armed with his sword, he captures 42 German soldiers, including a mortar crew. What a guy, what a hero, but it doesn't end there. After the war, He's transferred over to the Seaforth Highlanders and he sees action in Palestine and saves the life of 500 doctors, nurses, patients at the hospital Hadasha, which is just outside of Jerusalem. Well, well, when it's all over and he settles back into England, he used to do something that really amazed people. On the train, he would suddenly stand up and throw his briefcase out of the window. What people didn't realise as he was going past his own back garden and he used to fling it straight there, landing on the lawn. He died 89 years of age, peacefully in Surrey, in England. What a guy, a hero of mine. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, like, share and subscribe. And if you can, turn on the notifications, then we can find out what's coming down the line in the future. Now, before I go, a couple of names of my Patreon members. Ian Tomlinson, thanks buddy, and Matthew Bourgier. Hope I pronounce your name right. But for now, thanks a bunch.